No one has ever built a factory like this before. We're the first ones, and it's kind of impossible. So let's just do a quick history about manufacturing. There's been several eras of manufacturing. The very first is a guy in a house pounding together a chair and carving it out of a, some tree trunk someplace. That's the first way of making stuff. It's not really manufacturing, it's artisanal. It's an artisan working hard at something and carving something out into reality. It's very inefficient, it's very slow. You didn't really have true mass production until about the early 1900s, most notably with Henry Ford, where he pioneered the assembly line of like, okay, let's lay out a factory. So instead of having a bunch of artisans in a row, let's just lay out a bunch of simple steps so that you can produce the same item over and over again reliably. This was focused on the same item. You can have any color of Model T you want, so long as it's black. It's simple, it's focused, it's boiled down so that you can get exactly what you want reliably out of this system, and there's no way to mess it up. Then, about 70 years later, you started to have the lean manufacturing method, which was really implemented by Toyota, even though it was invented by a professor in the United States named Dr. Deming. But the lean Toyota manufacturing method is a way by which you are able to pull and flexibly change your factory so that you can create a higher level of customization and lower volumes while still doing it very efficiently and very reliably. This has been adopted pretty much the world over because it's a process by which you can optimize your factory and continue to fix things. It's less fixed than the giant monolithic assembly line. It's more cell-based, it's chunked up, it's broken up, and it's measured better than a typical assembly line. But now we're moving into a new era where we went from no customization with assembly lines to mild customization with Toyota where they have more models than ever before. But now with technologies like 3D printing, Theoretically, you should be able to make anything you want right out of the blue. You can order some item online, it shows up inside of our print farm and we pack it and ship it to your customer for you. That should be doable and that's what we're working for. That's why we say a warehouse where the shelves make the product. But the issue is this has never existed before. This is the artisan means of manufacturing one original product combined with the scale of traditional factories. This has never been done before, short of having a bunch of artisans lined up. And that's really expensive. So in order to do this affordably, in order to do it scalably, all the rules have to change. We don't get to use the assembly line in its same form. And lean is not efficient enough. The biggest issues that come up with this is like things like quality control. We can train people how to evaluate a medical device or how to evaluate a keychain or a pot. That person's expertise can focus in on that pot and learn how to do it. Or that robot can learn how to observe a pot and send it out. However, with 3D printing, we don't know what we're going to get. Someone can send a medical device and then they can send a little flower pot that just needs to be squirted out. Those two have very different quality control standards and very different means of evaluation. What is good over here may not be good over there. And a human cannot remember every condition. It's also impossible to have effectively a new assembly line for each one of those situations. On a car assembly line, when the car comes off, it is test driven in a set type of way because it's still a car. Whether it's a truck or a sedan, it is still a car. So the quality of the car is pretty well defined, but going between a medical device and a tchotchke, our system can make both of them, but there are different rules. Now the question is, do we build out assembly lines for each style of product that exists? Maybe, but there aren't enough assembly lines out there. The evaluation criteria of all these parts is so different that it can't be done. So how do you do it if you're not gonna build 50 different assembly lines for the 50 different categories of products that come through in order to be reliable? Well, the way we're going at it has multiple different factors in it. The first is we're just being simple. We recognize the items that we can make and we don't go after the items that we can't make. We don't harp on medical devices very often, so they're probably not gonna come through our API very often. And if they started blowing through and ruining our system, we would either build systems around them or reject certain items. So being focused and controlled at the start is the first step to doing this. Just don't do everything at first because it's impossible. 
But then the next part is just building the intelligence of the systems. AI and overall computational technology around vision and intelligence and decision making have radically improved over the last 10 years. Even within just generic printing itself, we are able to do things today that we could not do 10 years ago around observation and evaluation and quality control. We're gonna to continue to expand those because if you have a scalable system like an AI that is able to take a photo and evaluate that part, then that God system, that big brother, can look at all the parts coming off, make evaluations, and send the feedback into the system to where now you have something very flexible that is effectively able to artisanally build a single original part. But since it's all automated and there's not human work into it as intensely as somebody carving a chair, you can do it at scale. So even though what we're doing right now is impossible and unsustainable in many ways, technology is moving in such a direction to where we will be able to create a factory that makes anything on demand and truly meet that goal of a warehouse where the shelves make the product. That way you no longer need shipping. You no longer need these large monolithic factories. You just upload a file and the part shows up in the mail. I think that's worth fighting for and getting through the impossibility and getting it down to at least probable. Have a great day, everybody.